Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. In this short video, we're going to explain how to import a data set from an existing report. We'll start by looking at how to create a data set that we can then later import into a subsequent file. And we'll explain then how to import a data set from a report saved to a report server, followed by doing the same thing from a report saved as a local file. So not a particularly long video, but a useful technique to know. So let's get started. Let's start by creating the report, which contains the data set that we can then later import into another file. I've created a new report builder report, and the first thing I'll do in here is create a connection to the YSL Movies database. Just as a quick reminder, if you don't already have that installed, you can use this video to help you get it set up. And there's a link in that video's description, which you can use to download any needed files. Assuming you've done that part already, we can right click on the data sources folder in the report data window and choose to add a data source. I'll call my data source movies and then I'll choose to use a connection embedded in the report. I'll make sure it's set to a Microsoft SQL Server connection and then click the build button on the right hand side to begin constructing my connection string. I'll type in a shortcut to my local host, which is dot backslash followed by the name of the instance of SQL Server that I want to connect to, which in this case is SQL 2017. Having done that, I can use the drop down list further down the dialog box to select my movies database. Click OK a couple of times, and that's my data source created. Now we can use the data source to create a data set. I'll start by right clicking on movies and then choose add data set. I'll call this data set Oscar winners. Uh, so we're going to pick the Oscar winning films from our movies database. Rather than typing out my query, I'm going to click the query designer button so that I can simply select from a list of tables and columns. I'll start by expanding the tables folder and then head to the film table first. I'll select a few columns from here, such as title, release date, runtime minutes, Oscar nominations and Oscar wins. I'd like to pick some columns from some other tables as well. So I'm going to head to the director table next and select the full name and then to the genre table and select genre and then to the studio table and select studio. And then need to apply a filter so that I only see films with at least one Oscar win. So I can head over to the new filter button and click the uh, click the button. I need to change the field name from title to Oscar wins and then change the operator to is more than or equal to, and then, then type in a value of one. I can then click OK to write the select statement into the query box. Much better using the query designer than typing in that entire thing from scratch. Sadly, one thing I can't do in the query designer is apply an order by clause. I can't sort the results. And I'd like to see my films sorted in descending order of Oscar wins. So the film with the most wins will appear at the top. I can add an order by clause, but I have to type it in myself. So I'm going to type in at the bottom of my query, hit enter to give myself a new line, followed by the two words order by. And then on the next line, I want to refer to the Oscar wins field. I can either type that in or I can cheat and copy and paste it from another part of my query. So the Oscar wins field is referenced in the where clause here. I'm going to copy that and simply paste it in on the next line. By default, when you reference a field in the order by clause, it's sorted in ascending order. And I want my films sorted in descending order of Oscar wins. So I can add the DESC keyword to the end. So the final result of the order by clause should look like so. OK, that's a reasonably useful data set. So I've got that created. Let's click OK. And there's the data set populated with all the columns I've selected. I'd just like to check that my data set is returning the correct results in the correct order. And one way to do that is to create a table in the report to display the information that the data set returns. It isn't necessary to do this step, but it's a nice bit of reassurance so you can tell whether your data set is working as intended. So I'm just going to tidy up my report a little bit by selecting and then deleting the placeholder title text box. And I'm going to right click into the page footer and choose to remove that. Then I'm going to right click into the body of the report and choose insert table. 
I can then begin assigning fields from the dataset to the columns of the table, either by selecting the little field selector button in one of the cells in the, in the data row, or I can also click and drag columns into the table. But as I've started using the field selector, let's just select title, release date, runtime minutes. I can then begin dragging other columns in once I've run out of columns in the table, and I can attach those to the table in the position of the vertical blue line which appears. So I'm going to attach each extra column to the end of the table. Once I've done this, I'm then going to select all of the columns, all of the cells in the table, in fact, just to make sure that I don't run into a, the font rendering bug. Sometimes when you run a report, the font um, isn't displayed correctly. So a lot of the, uh, the values in the table get hidden. It's as though they're not even there. So a quick way to solve that is to select all the cells in the table and then switch from the default font to any other font and then back to the default font, and that usually solves the problem. A quick bit of very basic formatting. Again, it isn't necessary to spend much time on this. It's really not the point of the video, but just to make it a little more readable, we'll accept that the column widths are a little narrow to read everything clearly. But if I run the report, we should end up with a basic table presenting our results in descending order of Oscar wins. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Now that we've established that the dataset is working as intended, we can save the report so that we can then subsequently import this dataset into a later file. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you save the report as a local file or whether you save it to a report server. You can import datasets from both locations. But just to demonstrate that, let's save it to both. Let's head back to the design view and we'll save it as a local file first. I'm going to head to the file menu and then choose save as, and I'm going to point to my desktop and then save this as, let's call it Oscar winners or Oscar winning films or something along those lines. Oscar winners will do. Once I've clicked the save button and save this as a local file, I'll then also want to save it to a report server. Now, if you haven't done this before, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail in this video, but if you need some help with this, we have another video in this same playlist, which explains how to save things to a report server and get that set up. So that's the video to watch if you need a bit of advice. Assuming you already know how to do this, I'm going to head back to the file menu in Report Builder and choose Save As again. This time I'm going to point to recent sites and servers. As I've recently used this, uh, this report server on my local host, I can simply double click on that to locate it. And then I'll call the file the same name, Oscar Winners, and then just hit Save again to save it to the report server. Once that's finished, We've now got a connection to the report server. So you can see at the bottom, it's connected to the report server as well. Now we can create a new report that's going to import the data set we've just created. The easiest way to create a new report while Report Builder is open is to hold down the control key and press N for new. That will immediately close down the existing report. It would have prompted us to save changes if we hadn't already done so, and then create the brand new blank report. In here, I need to start by creating a data source. So I'll right click on the data sources folder and choose to add a data source. You don't need to call the data source the same as the one in the previous report, although that is what I'm gonna do in this case, I'll call it movies, but the name doesn't have to match. I'll use a connection embedded in my report to a Microsoft SQL Server, click the build button, type in a shortcut to my local host dot backslash, then the name of the instance of SQL Server I'm using is SQL 2017. I can then select the movies database from the drop down list. Now, technically, it's not that important that you connect necessarily to the same database, but the database you're connecting to does need to contain tables and columns with the same names as those defined in the data set we're about to import, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same database. Anyway, in this case, it will be the movies database. So I will select that and then click OK and OK again. And there's my second data source created. What I now need to do is create a data set which imports from one of my existing report files that I've just saved. To do that is fairly straightforward. I can right click on my movie's data source and choose to add a data set in the normal way. I can change the name of that data set. Um, again, it doesn't have to match the name. In fact, let's just call this one uh, Films Winning Oscars. So it's got a different name. 
and then rather than building up or writing my query in the query box, I'm simply going to choose to import a data set. So I can click the import button down at the bottom and then I can navigate to the location in which my report is saved. By default, because I've just saved to the report server, I'm already looking at that same location. So while we're here, why not select the Oscar winners report that we've just saved to the report server. I can double click on it or select it and then click open. You'll then get a list of all the data sets included in that report. Of course, we only created one, but if you had more than one data set, they will be in the list on the left hand side. It shows you the select statement that you've generated using the query designer or the one that you've written when you select the data set. And to import it, all you need to do is click the import button. It genuinely is that simple. Now, don't worry too much about the horrible, messy looking layout of the code that's just been inserted. This will resolve itself. If I just click the OK button at this point to generate the data set, you see that the columns list is populated. I can then right click on the data set and choose to view its properties. And you'll see that the formatting of that select statement has all been sorted out and it's a little easier to read now. So that's importing from a report server file. Importing from a locally saved file is equally simple. Let's right click on the movie's data source again and choose to add a new data set. I'll call this one, um, what should we call this one? Films, just films will do I think. And then I can click the import button again. This time I'll point to my desktop, which is where I saved my local report file. And again, I can double click that file to load a list of its data sets. Exactly the same as we've seen, as you would probably expect, I hope. I can click the import button. Again, the layout of the code is a bit messy, but that's not a problem. We can click OK and it populates the list of columns just in the usual way. We could create a table. In fact, it might be worthwhile very briefly creating a simple table just to demonstrate that the results returned are the same. I won't go with um, with a full table this time. I'll just insert a few columns from my movies data source. I can choose either of the two data sets I've created. I'll choose the title column and then the release date and then the Oscar wins. And then if I just change the column width a little bit, Make sure that I don't run into the text display bug. So I'll highlight all the cells in the table, change the font from the default to any other, and then back to the default. And a quick run of the report, just to demonstrate that we get the same results from our imported data set as you would hopefully expect. And there we go. So that's really all there is to importing data sets from existing reports. You can point to them whether they're a local file or saved to a report server, select the data set you want to import and it will load the select statement into your new data set. Even though it's a simple technique, hopefully it will save you time in the long run to avoid having to recreate the same data set again and again and again. And it's a, a slightly alternative technique to using shared data sets as we discussed in a previous video. So I hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.